back from your holiday break. Uh, we're going to do another video lecture on today. We're going to focus on readings in chapter 9 where we're going to spend some time talking about treatment group foundations. And so uh, again as always we encourage you to read the text and make sure that uh, you're prepared when you come to class. And so without any further ado let's move into our discussion, discussion for today relating to treatment groups. All right. We're going to spend some time talking about uh, the middle stage of group. Um, we're going to talk about preparing for the group work, structuring the work, uh, group member involvement and empowering, goal achievement, treatment methods in therapy group, uh, reluctant and resistance members in the group in the middle phase, as well as monitoring and evaluating progress. The middle stage of group, and as, you, as we've talked about uh, the different stages in development of group, the group, the middle stage of group is the interesting place or the interesting uh, portion of the group development series. Um, it's characterized by this initial period of testing and conflict and adjustment as the members are actually working through their relationships. Um, so members here are starting to demonstrate independence in their ability to engage leadership activities in the group. Uh, they may question the purpose and the goals of the group or the methods that have been proposed in which we want to carry those out and accomplish them. Um, they may also express contrary options and concerns about the process or their interactions with the leaders or certain members. So again, it's that that part of the group where you're comfortable enough with each other where you can start to actually push forward and dig into some deeper issues as well. Uh, so testing and conflict is just going to be a normal part of group life kind of in this particular phase of the group. And the worker, you as a leader of the group, are going to have to make the modifications to, and to contract uh, differently based on the assessment of the group's development and, and the changing needs of your members. So keep those things in mind as you're moving forward in your treatment group. We're going to talk about meeting preparation. So preparing for that meeting um, and actually understanding the cycle of assessment, modification, and reassessment. So as you're moving through your group series in the community, uh, paying attention to looking at what's happening in the context of your group, especially when you're looking at a structured time limited group, which all of you are looking at, given that you have five to seven community groups that you will need to run. So you'll need to continually be assessing and modifying and reassessing based on what your what kind of feedback and information you're getting from the group in terms of the level of progress. Um, you're going to also need to provide a medium through which the functioning of the group members can be assessed you know, such as looking at interpersonal skills or ability to perform certain tasks or attention spans, for example. So it really depends on the nature or the type of group that you're actually running. So if it's a self-help group, then it's about really providing some opportunities for people to actually demonstrate some self-help techniques that they've learned and to try and practice them in groups. So those might be uh, program materials and activities that you might want to think about in terms of ensuring that uh, the group preparation pieces are laid out. Also, think about uh, program activities that could be used as a specific part of treatment interventions. Um, also, improving, for example, improving interpersonal functioning, leadership, problem solving, anger management, those kind of things are things that you want to think about in terms of laying out activities that will actually help your group members learn about what they need to do. So, planning those things out is going to require some 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 time on your part. Uh, the program, and these program activities are also going to require careful assessment of the needs of the group members. So where are your group at? What are they needing at this particular point? As well as the characteristics of those particular group members uh, as you're thinking about potential activities. Is it going to be something that's going to create a lot of stress and strain in the group or is it something that can be worked through in a relatively simple fashion? So things like that in terms of your preparation for your meeting. On page 270 in your text, you will see a flow chart that actually gives you a good example of how this particular person went about selecting uh, those program activities when they're preparing for their meeting. 
We also need to spend some time structuring the work when you're in a treatment group. So really referring to uh, or understanding that these are planned time limited interventions and some examples that we could talk about. For example, if you've got a psychoeducational group, uh, then your agenda might look like uh, a short lecture to begin with, uh, then a discussion and maybe then some role playing or some modeling or rehearsing that can happen in the context of the group to actually reinforce uh, that learning. So making sure that you're always paying attention to how you're structuring what needs to happen prior to the actual group. Um, and also um, letting those members know about the beginning times, ending times, the agenda. Some folks have a set agenda, some people create one as they go. Um, the communication pattern, how are folks going to connect with each other, what types of interactional models are you going to actually use, uh, and then how are you going to transition from one activity to the next are all important parts of structuring the work of the actual group. So make sure that you pay close attention to that as you are working with your co-facilitator as you're looking at planning your community groups is to really think about probably each time before you meet or before you do your group to plan out what you're actually going to do uh, so you'll have an advanced plan to know about keeping the group on task in terms of the work they need to complete. Empowering and involving the members. Um, again, it's about a group is only as good as the participation that you're going to get from the members that are part of it. And so one of the things that you will learn is that the more participation that you're able to, able to engage in empowering people to do that, then the better outcome you will have. Um, you also, as, as a, a way of empowering folks as the leader or co-facilitator of these groups, are to make statements that express confidence in members' motivation, uh, point out their abilities, uh, describing their previous accomplishments, um, look at how they've assisted and helped other members in the group, uh, also acknowledging the difficulties and obstacles that they'll encounter as they attempt to reach a particular goal or objective. So knowing that, letting them know that you understand that it's a hard thing. Um, an example might be uh, letting people know that you're admiring them, not giving up, or that you continue to confront this difficult issue, um, and that you're expressing yourself about this really painful issue shows that you have some courage. So those are just some examples that you could utilize in terms of techniques um, and used to involve and empower the members in your group as well as actually having the members uh, take an active role in too and reminding them that this is their group and they need to be able to take charge and to do some of those things as well. Getting to those goals. Um, again, the treatment groups are focused and there's typically a group as well as individual goals that folks are really needing to attain. Otherwise, there's no point in actually being in a group setting. Um, so you may have to, in this middle phase, look at what we call secondary contracts. So looking at are there some other things that we need to do based on how the group has developed over time that need to be done and delivered in a different manner. Uh, it's also about helping people maintain the awareness of their goals, uh, keeping that front and center for them. You may even need to develop a specific treatment plan for certain members of your group to make sure that they have a roadmap to help them understand how they're getting to where they're going, um, as well as overcoming those obstacles in the treatment plan and then completing that plan. Uh, so the, the goal here is, again, to maintain the awareness of those goals and identified, that were identified and agreed earlier in the group, uh, to practice each a good practice to begin each meeting with a brief review of what occurred in the previous meeting and then review the goals that each member is working towards to achieve. Um, a brief go around and check in to see how members are focusing on those goals and let members know where they're at and the expectations that, that they need to actually change these things if they're going to change various aspects of their functioning in their life. So again, keeping those things in mind, uh, are always going to be very important in terms of keeping the goals front and center, as well as reconfirming members' commitment to the goals uh, that they decided to achieve earlier. Uh, so those are things that you will have to, as the group facilitator and co-facilitator, keep in mind. These are just some examples of some various types of treatment methodologies that are empirically based. So they are out in the field and they are being widely used in terms of different treatment methodologies. So uh, you can see these here and there are more examples that are actually in your textbook 
that you may want to actually refer to as well. Um, also, um, backtracking for just a moment, let me go back to this particular slide. When we're talking about these treatment plans, basically you're wanting to do this. If you've got people who are struggling with getting towards their goals or staying on point, then a treatment plan needs to identify a few things. It needs to specify who uh, is going to do what, when, where, how often, and under what circumstances. So the more that you can be explicit in terms of the development of that treatment plan with your client about what they need to do, the easier the task will actually end up being. Reluctance and resistance. And some of you who have been doing your practice groups have some experience in, as it relates to dealing with uh, reluctance and resistance. And so when you have those members in your group who are not really thrilled about being there, uh, it's about how you start to manage uh, some of that behavior. And so here on the screen, you've got some different things that you can take a look at uh, doing, but some things to also keep in mind that members can refuse. Uh, they don't, they have the right to, it's the self-determination thing about the right to refuse to participate. Uh, we need to be able to identify what the consequences for their refusals are. Talking about what's negotiable, what's not. Uh, you're needing to work to create a non-judgmental, accepting, and safe environment so people can talk about how they think and feel. Um, members Help those members identify those thoughts and feelings and that underlie that resistance. So what is the resistance really about? Uh, authentic and direct communication is probably the best bet as well as in involving the rest of the group. So soliciting members' views and definitions of the problem from their standpoint are some strategies that would be helpful in terms of you dealing with folks who are less than uh, willing to be a part of the group process. And then finally, um, understanding the importance of evaluation and monitoring, as you'll hear throughout the social work program, uh, evidence-based practice. And so looking at whether you want to look at session evaluation questions. We want to answer, ask two or three closed-in questions that give you some feedback about how the process went, whether they want to be open-ended questions, or a lacquer scale. On a scale of one to five, what did you learn and how are you going to be able to, be able to use it? Things like that. Uh, verbal feedback is also acceptable. And then also self-monitoring behaviors. There are group recording forms where uh, your members are required to actually chart their own progress as well as uh, you can actually have them uh, have family members or other folks that are connected with them also be a part of that monitoring process as well. So again, uh, wanting you to understand that these are some of the dynamics in terms of what you will experience uh, as you are moving into your treatment groups. And so um, with that, again, we encourage you to read and prepare yourself uh, to come to class ready to discuss uh, these treatment group foundations. So again, good luck and I will see you in class.